This is a video that I wanted to do for a while, but couldn't because when I finally decided to try Project Altus, it shut down due to all the hacking and whatnot, but now that's over, the game is back up, I was able to try it, and now I can talk about what's different and what's similar between ODS and Toontown Project Altus. Two servers that have taken Toontown and tried to put their own unique twisted spin on it, much different than Toontown Online or Toontown Rewritten. Now, the first big thing I want to go over right away so that people know when they're thinking about playing one or the other is that when Altus transitions from the alpha stage they're in right now to beta, Toon progress will be completely reset. So that means right now, as of January 24, 2017, any progress you make on that game will be undone. So that's something I would think about. If I were you, I would think about while playing this game. Because me and my friend were playing together, and we were working up tunes together, and then we both found out that tunes were going to be reset after alpha. So we stopped before we got any further, and we only got to 30 laugh, so it wasn't that big a deal. But it, I would have been pretty, pretty triggered if we had gotten further than that, maybe to maybe 70 or something with a few max gags. But we were nowhere near that, nowhere near maxing a gag track, so... It's all good. I'm prob if I end up playing it long term, I'm probably just gonna wait until beta because there's no reason to play it right now because all my all my progress would be reset. On the other on the other hand, ODS, as far as I know, there's not gonna be any type of tune reset. So if you wanna play ODS, then just go ahead, jump in, start playing, and you can be confident in the fact that progress you make now will be kept for the remainder of the game's existence, barring some utter and total collapse. Now, as far as gameplay goes, they both have new types of cogs in the game, where Altus has cogs called board bots, and ODS has cogs named tech bots. Now, I kind of I kind of like the board bots better in terms of just sheer novelty because tech bots the only the only term I've really heard of is script kitty which is the level 1 cog all these other terms are pretty new to me and I feel like they're not terms that people use in everyday life such as board bots you have a call called cog called a con artist. That's a pretty common term you hear a lot. The swindler, you know, you hear people call others swindlers a lot. Toxic manager, not very creative, but again, it's something that people can pick up on. A middleman, that's also something that people can pick up on. Trying to trying to remember a connoisseur, connoisseur, whatever. Yeah, that. Also something people can pick up on. You you get the gist. And then in ODS, unless you're very, very familiar with technology computers, you have stuff called a root user. Never heard of that before. ODS or a software simian or a keyboard cowboy. The only I feel like the only commonly heard terms used for cogs is again script kitties and maybe code monkeys. And in terms of actual gameplay, I I think the tech bots are actually really cool because they have they're unique in the sense that they again get to attack first. I already talked about this, so that provides more of a challenge when facing them. Though I feel that they may have reduced accuracy, it would make sense since they get to attack first because they do miss quite a quite a bit when I fight them, especially the cogs with group attacks. Very rarely would cogs with group attacks actually end up hitting all of the tunes. So that does make sense because a 
I don't know if you guys have fought root users yet, but uh, those things are uh, no joke. They have, I think, about five, five to seven group attacks that, when you're facing a level 12, they all do, at the very least, 20 damage. So, root users are no joke. Root users will destroy you, because they have that many group attacks, and they only have one attack that targets one tune. I think it also does 20 damage, so those are nothing to mess with. Tech bots definitely provide a challenge. Well, board bots, they, when it comes down to it, they're just, they're just cogs, you know, they, they don't get to attack first. They have the same amount of HP as any other level cog. The only, the only thing they provide is obviously there is more tasking variety. There's because the board bots are actually implemented into the tasks, but other than that, they don't really provide any new gameplay other than more tasking. Speaking of tasking, the thing I like about Project Altus that it has an all new quest line. All the tasks are different. You talk to different shopkeepers now, and they provide you with different things to do. And I feel like they're a wee bit harder than the original task line because you everyone knows when you get to the Berg and you first talk to Old Man, he changes it up because usually when you go to pick your gag to go to pick something to start training for, all you have to do is you go to the shopkeeper and they say, which one do you want to train for? And then you pick the gag. But Old Man, you talk to him and before you can pick your gag, he makes you do a bunch of nonsense, a bunch of tasks like defeating level 8 cogs and whatnot. And in Project Altus, from what I can see, I think it's the same as Old Man because me and my friend, when we got to Donald's Dock and we had to talk to now Barnacle Bessie, she made us do a bunch of tasks before we could actually pick our gag track to train for. So I think when you before you can train for any gag track, the shopkeeper will make you do stuff. Which I think I, I kind of like because the the deal with Old Man was when you first talk to him and when you're about to actually f complete the gag track training, you know, it's to help level up your gags and whatnot, help you get stronger. So I feel like that's the direction Project Altus is taking this. They want tunes to have an incentive to train their gags and whatnot. So I can definitely appreciate the way they're doing things. On the other hand, and I kind of have a gripe with this, ODS, the task line, from what I can see so far, I just got to the Berg on that game, and so far, all the tasks have been the exact same as Toontown Online, which kind of is a bore fest because I've done that quest line a bajillion times, so I'm kind of sick of it. I liked the fresh new take that Altus had on the task line. And not only that, right now there are no tasks involving specifically involving tech bots. So right now the tech bots don't really there's really no reason to fight them right now because none of your tasks will directly involve tech bots. So it's probably the best idea to avoid them right now. And it would definitely be better if the tasks actually made you fight tech bots because right now, yeah, they're a challenge, but there's really no, you don't, you're not going to gain anything from fighting them. So why bother? I think, I think ODS should definitely change up the tasks so that they, some of them involve tech bots, which I guess that's what fourth's end will be for whenever something is done with that, something gameplay wise, but still, I feel like they should have changed up the tasks a bit to involve the unique new cogs. Now this is cool. Both both the games, you can pick any track you want when you whenever you're picking a new gag track. Say in the old game you would just pick between tune up and sound when you got to Tune Central. In this game you pick whatever gag you want. So in in ODS actually this was an update after I started playing, so I didn't have the option to do it 
which I was kind of kind of salty about because I probably would have picked a lore first thing, which I didn't altis. Lore was the first thing I picked, but I ended up picking sound first as I usually do in ODS because I did not have the option to pick whatever I wanted. So I was a bit salty, but that's okay because it's there now and it's there for you to experience. So there's a lot of new combinations you can pick from in both these games instead of you know going the traditional route of Toontown Online or Toontown Rewritten. There's a new gag track in Project Altus called Zap, which I'm sure you all know about. And this gag track, it's I guess it's pretty cool to be able to have a new gag track, but I don't it's obviously not essential because the battle system hasn't really been changed in any way. And we've been without Zap for however long the game's been out for. So it's obviously not an essential gag, but it's it seems pretty strong, especially in conjunction with Squirt. I think I think the level six gag for Zap, you can do 140 damage to all cogs if you combine it with Squirt. Because if you com if you combine water with electricity, then you know, you know that you get the gist of it. Combining Zap with Squirt will make Zap stronger. But in a solo situation, I can't be I can't see Zap being extremely viable. But it is I guess it is it is pretty cool to see a new gag track, but I think more people will actually take this as an incentive to be zapless and have tune up, trap drop in lore so you know i can see zapless being one of the best tunes out there because they don't get this new gag track which again isn't essential but they basically get all of the essential gag tracks and they don't leave anything super important out because in toontown rewritten and ods if you want trap and drop both trap and drop you gotta leave something essential out you either gotta leave sound out Tune up out or lore out, and all of those are cons aren't really considered the best option. You want tune up. If you want lore, trap, and drop, you've got to be tune upless or soundless. So, in Project Altus, being zapless might be the best way to go. And in ODS, there's no new gag track yet that I've heard of. So. And I think that's the way it should be. I don't think I don't think a new gag track was warranted, honestly, because now Zapless tunes are going to be kind of OP. Zapless tunes are probably going to be the best tunes in the game, to be quite honest, to be quite frank with you. So I think I think ODS not putting in a new, new gag track. I think that might have been the right moves, or at least at least the move I agree with. Now Doodles, I know for sure that ODS has Doodles. I don't know what the deal with Doodles is on Project Altus. I have definitely seen some videos of people using Doodles, but they were the people using Doodles were staff. So I don't know if they're actually Doodles. I there hasn't been an obvious way to buy a Doodle. I think my friend went into a pet shop and he couldn't actually do anything in there. So I don't I don't think they're doodles. I don't think doodles are available to the general public on Project Altus yet. In the comments, you can correct me if I'm wrong, because I may very well be wrong, but I'm not sure. But ODS, you can definitely buy Doodles, which that's a huge plus. Considering how long Toontown Rewritten has taken to put in Doodles, and they're not there yet, that's a huge step in the right direction. So, props to them for putting in Doodles right away. To go along with the new cogs, the all cogs in ODS, they have the cog abilities, which I already talked about, so I'm not going to spend too much time on this. And in Project Altus, those cog abilities are nowhere to be found. And I kind of have a problem with this again, because the battle system hasn't really been balanced at all from what I can see. So you're going to have Zapless tunes now, which again, I think are going to be kind of kind of busted, kind of OP. And there hasn't been any balance to sound being ridiculous that I can see. So 
I don't know. It just seems like it's going to be super easy once once you have your once you have your Zapless tunes with all maxed gags and doing boss battles and such. I think they're going to be kind of busted. So I think unless maybe there is a maybe there has been a balance to the battle system that I haven't seen yet because again I. I'm still very early in that game, and I'm not going to be progressing anytime soon because, like I said, I don't want to play a bunch just to have my tune reset. But I like what ODS did with the cog abilities because it makes the battle system not brain dead, and you have to pay, actually pay attention to what the cogs are about to do, whether it's about to make it make lower accuracy or lower our attack power or just become immune to sound. Now the promotions. I I forget if I went over promotions in my previous video, but again, promotions in ODS, they are when if you don't kill a cog in a certain amount of turns, I think it's three to five, then they will promote. And the way it works is they will promote to the next cog that has their same body type. So if you let a flunky promote, then they'll promote to a micromanager. And if you let a micromanager promote, they'll promote to a raider. If you let a double talker promote, they'll promote into a backstabber. And if you let a backstabber promote, they'll promote to an eagle. You get the gist of it. And sometimes the cog won't promote to the next cog, but they'll just promote to a 2.0 of that same of the cog they already were. And they will recover full health to full health whenever they promote regardless of the situation. And that's nowhere to be found in, what's it called? That's nowhere to be found in Project Altus. And I haven't done a VP or any type of boss yet in ODS, but I have a friend that, Sperry, that has, and he says the cogs still promote in the VP. So that's a thing. So again, another, another challenge added to ODS, which gives you an incentive not to dilly-dally and kill the cogs as quickly as possible because if you don't then a stronger one's just going to take its place and you're going to be you're going to end up being in a hole deeper than the one you were just in i i personally like the promotions as long as they're balanced because i think there was a bug there was a bug at the very beginning of the game where cogs would promote way way higher than they were supposed to like me and my friends were fighting a Yes Man level 4 on the street along with two other cogs, and the Yes Man promoted to a Big Cheese level 12, which that was excessive. As long as promotions don't do that, then I think it's fair and balanced. Now, in ODS, I don't think I've talked about this, but in ODS, some of the, co the regular cogs, the non-tech bots, they were buffed hardcore hardcore buffs to name a few lone sharks had now have paradigm shift it's not a 24 damage one but it's i think it does about 17 to 18 so it's not the strongest one but that's still a significant amount of damage and they still have chomp which does 24 damage so lone sharks uh, are definitely a lot stronger big cheeses have power trip now and i think it can do anywhere from 18 to 22 because they're weird because their attacks like to they like to vary in damage sometimes and there were i think corporate raiders now have power trip hollywoods have a new attack called song and dance which is just hits one tune i feel like that's kind of a nerf to them because actually because they Basically, it basically lowers their chance of using power trip, and that's still only, their only group attack. So I feel like that's a nerf. So they have more of a chance of using just a single target attack. And some of the, a lot of the big cogs got this attack, got a attack, an attack called cigar smoke, which I believe was a move from the original game that got taken out for obvious reasons, but it has now been put back in. And I think. The, I think all the level 12s have it, and I think it does 20 damage. And I think I know the Mingler has it, and I think it does also around 20 damage. There might be some other cogs that have it, but those are the those are the obvious ones I know. 
and it does a decent amount of damage, but again, it also lowers the chances that cogs will use group attacks. Actually, root users definitely root users don't have cigar smoke. I think their only their only attack their only group attack is I don't remember what it's called, but he basically just runs and runs at you and goes through you, and that's the only group attack the root users have. But but yeah, a lot of the cogs have been buffed significantly. Again, I don't remember. I don't remember exactly how many of the cogs got buffed or in what ways, but yeah, the significant ones are that Big Cheeses have Power Trip, Corporate Raiders have Power Trip, and Lone Sharks have Paradigm Shift. Legal Eagles have Power Trip now. What's the other level seven? It's Minglers. They are. They always had group attacks. Lone Sharks have Paradigm Shift. Legal Eagles have Power Trip, and. Corporators have power trip. So those are the probably the most significant cog buffs I can think of. And this matters a lot because the CEO was it had the potential to be a challenging boss, but the problem with that was that they were basically the weakest cogs in the game because they didn't have any group attacks, where I think whereas I think Cellbots were the strongest cogs in the game because you had Hollywoods and Minglers that had very strong group attacks and mingler I, f I still feel like M hollywoods were stronger than minglers just because hollywoods use power trip way more than minglers use paradigm shift because minglers liked to use their single target attacks a lot more than they like to use power trip or paradigm shift so i do feel like hollywoods were definitely tougher than minglers and then you had gladhanders that could do 20 damage and that's a lot for how low level they are and you had uh, you had big wigs, they could do power trip too, but they were the only one cog with a group attack, the only lobot with a group attack, and it wasn't. I think it was one of the weaker power trips. And then boss bots just no group attacks whatsoever. And then cash bots, the only boss bot with a significant group attack was robber barons, but again they were the only one. Actually, boss bots they did one cog did have a group attack, but it was a yes man and it was super weak and. That was kind of irrelevant because yes men weren't in the CEO because they were too they weren't high enough level. The weakest cog in the CEO is Downsizer, and Downsizer and don't have any group attacks. But my point is that this changes everything in the CEO because you now have you now have corporate raiders and big cheeses, and they are extremely common in the CEO doing power trip. So that's going to be that's going to make the CEO a lot tougher because in the, it's really hard to go to have a perfect run in the CEO because of the nature of V2.0 cogs. So I personally think the one fog rule should probably be retired in ODS in the CEO because it's going to get nasty if you use that strategy in the CEO, because if you have a row of raiders or cheeses, then they're going, they will be able to power trip you now. So that's kind of something I'm glad about because like Frizzy Dog and Pop said one, once said, the CEO was just too long to be too easy. And now it'll be a bit tougher with boss bots having group, significant group attacks. Now, some this is a minor one, but it's kind of annoying. You can't type your name in Project Altus yet. That feature has not been added for whatever reason, which I feel like that's one of the simpler features, but I can kind of understand why they're not focusing on that, because like I said, tunes are going to be wiped after alpha, but that's just something I thought I would throw out there. One of the problems with ODS is that its player base is weak. I don't think it's had, I think it's peak has been 180 people, which is not good if you want people to do stuff with, like bosses and whatnot, whereas Project Altus, they consistently get between 300 to 600 players on, which obviously that's nowhere near rewritten, but that is a solid player base and you will have tunes to do stuff with. So if ODS doesn't get any more attention if it doesn't get a larger player base soon then i don't know how it's i don't know if the developers are going to be 
motivated to keep going. But maybe they will. But I'm not sure. So I don't I don't really understand why Altus has a larger player base. I just I guess they just have a lot more people supporting it and whatnot, but I, I do find it kind of strange considering ODS will have no tune reset and Altus will, but I guess people just like the content in that game better. But that is a thing. ODS's weakness is its small player base. If it had a big player, if it had a larger player base, then then it would be set for a while. But that is a big question mark and may bring into question its longevity, which kind of sucks to say because I think again like i said in one of my previous videos this game has a lot of potential and i want to see it grow and i want to see a new hq and whatever new content they have in store for us but we'll have to see how the game holds up in the future there is a new leveling system in project altus you it's basically a generic leveling system you start out at level one and you get to level 70 and that's the max level and basically how you get XP you get XP by first killing cogs that's a simple one and then you get XP by completing tasks and now when you pick a task in the right hand corner of the task it'll tell you how much experience points it will give you and the amount of XP you need to level up goes up after each level of course and what you basically every 10 levels you get a laugh point so this means that seven new laugh points have been added onto Toontown Project Altus. I actually think the max lap is 149. So seven of the seven of that comes from this new leveling system. Other, I don't know where the other five comes from, but that's cool that there's new ways to get laugh. But at the same time, I feel like I feel like Project Altus. I feel like this leveling system. I kind of wish it added more. It gave you more because right now it's just. It's just another way to get laugh points, which I guess is cool, but again, I wish that it actually gave you something better, because basically, be if you're level 70, it doesn't really mean anything, it just means you did a bunch of tasks, did and fought a bunch of cogs, and you got 7 extra laugh points for it, you don't really get anything else out of it, which I feel like has been Toontown's big, one of Toontown's biggest problems is that basically everything you do is for laugh points, and nothing else. Especially at the end game when you're doing bosses, it's just it's just a bunch of laugh points. But who knows? Maybe they'll maybe they'll have some other reward in store for us with the bosses and whatnot. We'll just have to wait and see. But ODS does not have this leveling system, but they do have some. Uh, they do have another way to get la extra laugh, which is through these achievements. Or badges every time you get an achievement you can wear it as a badge which basically I forget it'll, it'll be somewhere on your name tag it'll be I think it'll be above your name I think we we definitely talked about this in the last video but I think every 10 achievements you get another laugh point I don't know I don't know exactly what the max laugh is now on ODS but it, hit, it has also risen thanks to the achievements so in both games there are ways to there are ways to get extra laugh and I kind of like the achievements better than the leveling system because it's because people have always liked achievement hunting they've always liked you know achieving stuff and accomplishing what the game has in store and there are a lot of cool achievements in ODS such as the boss solos and whatnot so I do I do think the achievement system was a better way to get laugh only slightly than Project also again you don't get any really get anything from the achievements other than laugh points but it is a cool way to challenge yourself and whatnot there is a new fishing system in ODS and I kind of don't like it it's basically you you cast out your rod like always but to reel it in you have to right click you have to right click the little button on next above your tune that you, you also use to cast, which it I guess it's supposed to make fishing more engaging or something, but I don't really like it because I just have to end up I end up just having to do more when when I fish. It doesn't really make it more fun, so 
but I don't, it's kind of pointless, where Project Alta's fishing has not been changed, so I don't have any qualms about that, other than I don't, I never liked fishing, and I won't like fishing no matter what. And another thing about ODS is, I don't know if they fixed it, but fishing, the more you fish, the laggier the game will get. Fishing dramatically drops frames in ODS for whatever reason. It's definitely a bug, but it's a bug they need to fix because it basically makes fishing more, even more of a chore because every few buckets you have to log out and log back in because the game becomes unplayable because of how much you're lagging. But in Project Altus, that's not a problem. And then in ODS, you have the rod durability, which I talked about in my other video, and you have the baits and the lures, which are supposed to track certain specific kinds of fish. I haven't touched them, I haven't used them, but according to Sperry, they're pretty useless, so I personally wouldn't waste my jelly beans on those lures and whatnot. Okay, speaking of fishing and jelly beans, there's something I forgot about the leveling system to mention from Altus, which this makes me change my mind a little bit about their leveling system. With every time you level up, you get jelly beans. I don't, I don't know exactly how much, but you get enough jelly beans that you don't have to. Ride, you basically don't have to ride the trolley at all as long as you keep doing your tasks. So that's a huge plus from Project Altus, and I think that was an amazing idea because. In all other servers, being a low tune sucks because you have to ride the trolley over and over again to get jelly beans or you won't be able to get gags. But in Project Altus, you ride the trolley a few times when you first get into the game. Then you just do your task and fight some cogs and your jelly bean jar just fills itself, which I find extremely convenient. I think that was an amazing idea, so props to them, props to them. The Actually, now I... I think I like the leveling system more than the achievement system because it does give you something other than laugh. It gives you some more money to buy your gags with. As far as buildings go, in both servers, Alta seems to have significantly harder buildings. Along with the fact that they have six-story buildings, which will definitely be tough, I think all the build I think buildings in general are harder because me and my friend that I was playing with. Chris too, we were trying to, we had a task from good old Barnacle Bessie at the very beginning of Donald's Dog where we had to do a two-story cog building, and we figured, okay, well, let's just do a two-story on Barnacle Boulevard because usually any street that leads to Toontown Central has really easy cog buildings, but no, these cog buildings were hard. They had level sevens and eights in them, and they're only two stories on the, toon, on the street leading to Toontown Central, so... The cop buildings in this game have definitely been buffed, which it kind of got annoying because we kept dying and we ended up having to ask one of our other friends for help who had a strong, had a pretty strong tune, so he got us out of a jam, but it definitely, it definitely seems like Project Altus has tougher buildings. And from what I can see, ODS, the buildings have not changed at all, unless you do it. Except for some aesthetic changes, if you go in Cellbot, Cashbot, Lobot, or Bossbot buildings, you'll see models from the HQs inside the buildings, which is a nice touch, but again, it's just it's just a visual change. It, they haven't been affected gameplay-wise at all. Unless, But if you aren't challenged, go into a TechBot building, because the, especially a four or five story, because the cogs will be strong, and they will attack you first, so tech bot buildings are definitely going to be a pretty big challenge, but other than that, the building, cog buildings have not really been changed in ODS. <laughs> now this, I thought this was really cool, Project Alts didn't do any of this, but ODS, it allows you to see what organic gag track people have, if you open their tomb panel, then if you'll see their organic gag track, it'll be blue and blue. No, it'll be green instead of the regular blue that you normally see. So you can tell right away what organic gag track people have. And then you can hover your mouse over their gags to see how much damage they do. So instead of asking people how much their fog does or how much their sound gag does or Unmax TNT does, you can just hover your mouse over and see for yourself, which I think is a very, very useful touch, and definitely 
makes things more efficient. Instead of us having to ask people how much it does, we can just right away see for ourselves. And I can definitely appreciate that. ODS also has a statistics page in the sticker book. And it is a very detailed statistics page. I think I already talked about this, so again, I'm not going to spend that much time on it. But it has basically anything you can think of on there, even boss solos. And from what I can see, Altus does not have that at all. So step up your game, Altus, in that regard. Because I think statistics page is something that we've definitely been asking for for a while. I think that I think that was first brought up by Frizzy Dog and Pop again. He definitely thought that a statistics page would be useful. But I think I think he wanted it in a way that you could view other tune statistics and I don't think you could do that in ODS, but who knows, this it's early, so maybe there could be a feature that allows you to see other people's statistics, but for now that's not the case. In conclusion, should you play which one would be a better game to play right now between ODS and Project Altus? On one hand, if you play Altus right now, January 24, 2017, your tune is just going to get reset back to 15 laugh at the end of alpha, beginning of beta stages. So that is definitely a huge turnoff. And on the other hand, you have ODS who with their weak player base. But if you make a tune, you won't have to worry about it being reset. And you can also type a name. So you can name your tune whatever you want. Unlike Project Altus, where you have to get some generic tuny name. So which one you should pl should you play? Well, personally, I would probably choose ODS because the fact that my tune's going to be reset is a giant turnoff from Altus. I don't want to play it at all right now. I tried it out for... I tried it out just because I was curious to see if it was good. I think it's a pretty I think it's a pretty good spin, pretty good take on Toontown. I think it's fun, but I'm probably not going to play it at all until until it's out of alpha. So personally, I would play ODS over Project Altus, but if ODS is in your cup of tea with the tech bots and the cog abilities and whatnot, then I completely understand. You can go over to Altus, but per personal personally, I definitely like ODS more right now, just at this moment, which that could completely change after they come out of Alpha. But for now, I'm leaning more towards ODS. You know, I probably it's possible I missed some things, some differences, some similarities in this video. If you have, if you think of something that I missed, you can leave it in the comments, and if I think of anything then I may make a, another video about it if it's significant enough. But for now, that's it from me, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.